That's what we took.
all of thy worship. We sing thy worship, all of thy worship. Here's thy worship, all of thy worship. We sing thy worship. Come on, everybody, say you love you, Lord. You are worthy. Make it personal, say you know what? You are worthy. You worship you for me. For all the things you come to me, Lord.
Jesus, we ain't never left. We ain't never left you alone. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Our grandparents, he and my other friends, he and my other grandparents, um, Julia, Mother White, and Anthony, yeah. Mr. Anthony, Mr. Anthony. Hey Amen. But we know that they have instilled something in this young man that he can sing like this. Glory, yeah, hallelujah. When I first saw John sing that song, he went and got him a mic and sat from the back. I said, you know what? He getting ready to make it serious now. We got to let these young children deliver their message, however God give it to them. And honey, I don't care what stuff he started. I'll be ready. Thank God. Thank God. Lord, the hallelujah. We're the children who love these babies that were okay. Amen, amen. Lord, the hallelujah. At this time, we're asking if you have a choir that we will switch out. Amen. Amen. We will get prepared for our giving on this afternoon. Amen. We don't want to hold back. That's the Lewis on this afternoon. Amen. 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 Knowing that there was a morning service. Amen. And there was a morning service here. I'm tru I truly believe that the gospel came forth. Amen. 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 God showed himself in word of faith this morning. Amen. And we receive him however he come in. Amen. Amen, amen, bless the Lord. So we are asking our trustees and our leaders for today, if you will come forth, so we can get our giving in the way and out of the way. Amen. Amen. We don't want to hold back Pastor Lewis. Amen. Amen, amen, bless the Lord. Amen, amen. Our leaders for today. Amen. Bless the Lord. We're asking for the pans, amen. Amen, bless the Lord. Amen, bless the Lord. Amen. Amen, bless the Lord. Amen. As we give prepare for our giving, we do salute the man of God on this afternoon, Pastor Lewis, for just coming out to help us, help us celebrate our man of God. Amen. We do salute you on this afternoon. We thank God for just allowing you to come and preach the gospel to the people. Amen. 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 We know that we must be willing vessels. Amen. Preaching the gospel in season and out of season. Amen. Amen. Bringing it forth like a two-edged sword. Amen, amen. Bring them forth deliverance. Amen. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. At this time, we're going to go ahead on and pray over our offering. Amen. Is the choir ready? You can come forth. Amen. Amen. Y'all come on and give it up for the choir. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. We will be taking up two offerings. Amen. Amen. One for our honoree and one for Pastor Lewis. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let every heart pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord and give her life. Lord, we ask you that you already come forth and bless the seeds. Amen. The giving on this afternoon, God. God, we want it to be built up for your men of God on this afternoon. We want you to, them to be able to just to carry the gospel, and even the more God. But God, we ask you to pay the way for them, God. Even the more God. God, we want you to be able to bless them aboundingly, God, just abundantly, God, in their lives, God. You got to allow this to be given unto them, God, through love, God, and by love from your people, God. God, we ask you to continue to elevate them even the more. As they go through spreading the gospel, God. God, we ask you to strengthen their hands even the more, God. Cover them even the more, God. God, I'm asking you to put a hedge of protection around both of them, God. Just like you did, Job, God. When the enemy come up to buff them, God, they still have their heads of protection around them. And God, let them know that they are love on this afternoon. And the people is given out of the abundance of their hearts, God. And Lord, we just want to say we bless, asking you to bless them. The giving on this afternoon, and then bless the one that are doing the giving. In the name of the Father, Son, and precious Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're asking for a selection from the musicians. Amen. Now they 
services in the hand of the ushers. Amen. 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 Amen.
uh, in Goldsboro. Amen. I know he is a man of God. Amen. I know he's a husband. Yes. I know he's a father. Amen. I know he's a brother. Amen. He's all the good things. Right. You know, he's uh, head of our Christian <laughs> education. Amen. Every year, this man brings the dinner bus to Goldsboro for people that cannot uh, have, do not have uh, dental insurance. Amen. They can come free and get their teeth clean, full of whatever's needed. And he even added on a health screen. Some people don't have health care, but they can come get a free screen. So I'm just so thankful to be able to be in a church with a man of God that loves people, one that loves to be a service to people. So I'm just excited. To be able to end our pastor. Amen. And that's Pastor Jesus will turn around for you. 
Tyshawn, Brother uh, Minister of Music, we thank God for him this afternoon. Give him a hand this afternoon. Give his choir a hand. Amen. 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 I see y'all fanning up there. I'm about to go down and get a leap of fan down there. We don't want you to get crowded in this afternoon. God is good. Yes, and greatly to be praised. Yes, Thank God for this glorious invitation. Thank God that He will. Not only will He, but He has already yes. turned it around. Yes. Anybody got a turn around story? Yes. Anybody got a story? Do you think about where you were and where you are today? Has anybody got it around? Turn it around. Turn it around. Hey, hey, somebody said you wouldn't be here today. But God turned it around. Somebody said you'd never cost you anything. But God turned it around. God will. Turn it around. Why? Well, because it's going to be all right. You don't let the trouble get in your way. It's all right. It's all right. Amen. Amen. Give it all and praises to God the Father, the Son, and to the Blessed Holy Ghost. We do bring you greetings this afternoon from King Tuck Missionary Baptist Church of Curry, North Carolina, my church of birth. Missionary, the Middle District Missionary Baptist Association, my association of birth. But this afternoon we come bringing you greetings from Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church of Macclesfield. Stand up, Anderson Chapel, there in the house this afternoon. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And from St. Stephen's Missionary Baptist Church of Bloomsboro. Stand up, St. Stephen's. It's a blessing to have both of us in the house this afternoon to represent and we thank uh, Reverend uh, Minister Howard and the Reverend Bass for the greetings. Not only that, but we bring you greetings from the Bell Creek Missionary Baptist Association of uh, Goldsboro, where the moderator is the Reverend Joe A. Jackson, all of which is part of the General Baptist State Commission, where the president is the Reverend Leonzo Lynch. And we pray that you will continue to keep us lifted up in prayer. Now, we're going to ask uh, my wife to stand, Lady Lois A. Lewis. Amen. We want to make sure that she is recognized before we go too far. We thank God for one of our daughters being with us and four of our grandchildren. One, two, three, four. And I claim the other three children that was with us, so they're my grandchildren too. Amen. We thank God for, for them. Amen, amen. To Pastor Gray, thank you again for this invitation. Long time coming. We've been trying to change services for some time. I've been trying to get them in Ghost World way before the pandemic. And then even uh, try to get them some zone thing. But something keeps happening. Something keeps happening. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to blame you, Lady D. I'm not going to blame you. I'm not going to blame you. But there's always a birthday. An anniversary. And I just celebrate the both of you. And I just thank God for uh, the lady in the house this afternoon. Give me first lady a uh, hand. But uh, we thank God for, for them. We was blessed to be in attendance at their wedding. And we thank God for the love that they share and the encouragement that they share one with another. We always see or hear something wonderful for them. And we have a nickname for Brother Gray. I'm just not going to share it with you this afternoon. I think he may have already shared it with you, this week. But we thank God and we thank God for him because he proclaims his love for his wife. So we thank God. For this. And not only does he proclaim his love for his wife, but he proclaims his love for God and for this fellowship. We thank God for a word of faith this afternoon. Give yourself a hand this afternoon. 
God has done and is doing great things. Look around at what the Lord has done with this building. Look how he has brought you through. And we want to recognize Deacon Gray and uh, and uh, Mother Gray. The, they're in the back, but we thank God for them and for all of the word of faith for all that you do. We know that just a few weeks ago, you likewise had a health screening here in Greenville. Amen. A wonderful event, and we pray that your continued work, your work continues on. Amen. Awesome, God. Amen. Lastly, we do want to acknowledge, even in the midst of all this this afternoon, we keep the great family in prayer. Amen. Our hearts were sad when I received a text from my brother on Tuesday. And we went immediately into prayer with him. And we know that the loss of any family member is difficult. It's rough. But the loss of a baby to the mother, to the father, to the grandparents, to the siblings, to everyone who's come in contact, it is a great loss. So we continue to pray with you this afternoon. And the choir started this afternoon with telling you it's going to be all right. Don't let your troubles get in your way. There are some things that happen in life that we just can't control. We can't change. Certain things just that outside of it. Nothing we can do will Change what has happened. But where you are right now, you just keep praying. Keep trusting in the Lord. For it's going to be all right. He can turn it around. What do you mean, Pastor? I, I, I know it's, it's not going to bring the life back. But in the midst of all that we go through, God will open up a thing to show us just the joy that we need. For truly, you have to believe, you have to know, you understand that all things work together to the good of those who love the Lord and call according to his purpose. We thank God for this afternoon. And then to the young man on the drum and singing that song, give him a hand this afternoon. I know, I know that there's something that goes on in that household that keeps them steadfast. Continue to pray for them and pray for all of our young people because I want to let you know that this is not how our story ends this afternoon. This is not how our story ends. It's really truly just a beginning because God will work it out. All you got to do is just give it up and let God have control. Amen. Amen. We pray that we have to all the ministers too. We don't want to overlook the ministers and from St. Stephen's, Anderson Chapel, the house ministers, the deacons from Anderson and trustees. We thank God for you and to word of faith. There is a word from the Lord. And if you will just bear, bear with me just for a few minutes, we will we're not going to be out of your way because we want the word to stay with you. We just come to bring you the word. We want you to keep the word. But I'll go back home in a little bit. To Brother Dancy, we thank God for you this afternoon for being here and broadcasting via Facebook and maybe YouTube, whatever whatever streaming you have going on this afternoon. We thank God for, for you. Facebook going to be on YouTube later. All right. We thank God for you, Facebook and on YouTube later. Those of you with your Bibles, read back if you turn to the book of Acts, chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. It was a nice ride from Green from Goldsboro this afternoon to Greenville.
course, I do this about every other Sunday anyway because three of my grandson, grandchildren lives here in Greenville, so I have to shut up while their mother is working, drop them back off home. So Pastor Gray asked me, I said, no, it's not out of my way. It's last minute, but I'm going to be in Greenville anyway. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. The words of Acts 28 from the King James rendition, it says, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, but they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the vimeous beast hang on his hand, they said upon themselves, No doubt, this man is a murderer. Home thought he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. How be it? They looked when they had, when he should have sworn, or fallen down dead suddenly. But after that, they looked a great while and saw no harm come to him. They changed their mind and said that he was a God. Amen. Pray with us. Heavenly Father, we come again to say thank you. Fathers, we stand behind this sacred desk. Father, we acknowledge that we are not able of ourselves. But Lord, we do ask that thou would send the preacher, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, that it may use my tongue to preach your word. Use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let this same spirit abide with these, your children, that someone may profess Jesus as Lord of their life. This we do pray and we say thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Verses 3 and 4. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the beamious beast hang on his hand, they said amongst themselves, No doubt, this man is a murderer. Home thought he had escaped the sea. Yet vengeance suffered not to live. Verse 3 in particular. There came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. If you just pray with me for a few minutes, we want to talk to you from the subject. This is not how my story is. This is not how my story ends. It's interesting because as they were saying that growing up in my mother's house from a young man to a grown man we have faced many Situations in our lives. We have had trials. We have had tribulations. We have had things where we thought, or somebody told us it was the end, and we couldn't go on. But the Lord has brought us through this, and He's brought us through that. And we have come to this point. And Paul himself this afternoon was a man like mine. Paul had come through this and he's come through that. He had been bound in jail. He had been shipwrecked. He had been through many trials and tribulations. And the Lord brought him through all of this. Down in jail him and Silas. They said they sang a hymn and say the prayer. Yeah, all right. And the Lord at midnight brought them out of the jail. Yeah, yeah, 
And now Paul has been before, he has been before uh, the ruling powers. And he was condemned and sent to Rome. They're on that ship. Sailing to Rome, the Lord comes to him as spirit angel in the night and tells him that this ship is faced with danger. As a matter of fact, it shall not survive. But I want to let you know that you must go to Rome. And I want to tell you this afternoon, when God tells you something, but he tells you that this is what's going to happen. You can believe it. All right. You can take it down to the bank. You can put it in a safe deposit box. You can hold on to it. You can cash it. You can know that it's there. Because if God said it, it's going to happen. You just got to trust and believe. And Paul, he warned. the captain, mm -hmm. that this danger is faced, this voyage is faced with danger. Mm -hmm. And we ought to go this way or that way. But they believed their shipmasters mm -hmm. more than they believe the man of God. Now, I just want to put a pin right there for a moment. And I don't mind, I don't mean to get in your business this afternoon, but the pastor told me to treat it like I was home. So the question for you in this, this afternoon is, how many of you, your pastor have told you what God has said, but you believe someone else? Other than the word of God. All right. You know that's the way we are. Amen. We like to believe everything that comes across the news. Uh -huh. We believe Facebook. Uh -huh. We believe Google. Yeah. We believe TikTok. We believe everything except what has stood the test of time. All right. The word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Heaven and earth yeah. shall pass away. Before one Dr. Killer of God's word shall pass. Right. But yet we believe everything and everyone else. Uh -huh. So the ship is caught up in a storm. And the ship is beaten and broken apart. And the soldiers were preparing to kill the prisoners. But Paul spoke up. And there was a centurion that believed Paul. And he said, let us not kill them. But let them cast it to the sea. And those that survive, survive. And those that do not survive, everything will be alright. But because Paul was on board. And because the word was with Paul. And because God had a mission for him. They was cast into the sea. Some on splinters, some on boards, some with ropes, some with sails, but they made it to land. There's a message there for you this afternoon. When your ship seems like it's going down, when all around you is sick and fast, hold on. Hold on to whatever rhythm God has given you. Because God will bring you through. Well, they begin as they come to the land. Verse chapter 28 picks it up and says that they were escaped and they knew that the island was called Melita. Uh -huh. And on this island, the scripture says that there was barbarous people. Now, I don't know exactly how barbarian they was. I don't know whether their lack of knowledge was slow, or maybe it was their looks, maybe it was their dress, but all they knew was that they didn't know the people. 
And a lot of times when people don't know you, they don't know your character, they don't know where you're from, they will call you a barbarian because they don't understand. But they say these barbarous people showed us no little kindness. They may have been barbarous. They may have been little known. But one thing they had, they had kindness. You know, there's some folks in the church that don't know how to have kindness. There's some folks in the church that won't come to a fire. There's some folks in the church that won't take care of you in the rain and they won't give you food. But yet these strangers. They show no little kindness. They put out the spray. They made a fire. They warmed them. It was raining. They gave them a covering. It was cold. And they gave them all that they could. But watch this. Paul. Paul wasn't just a taker. But Paul was a giver. You know, sometimes we run into large people who are just takers. You know, they'll use you. And they abuse you. But Paul, he went out and he knew that he wanted to stay warm. So he went and gathered a bundle of sticks. And he knew that the fire needed to be kindled. And he laid the sticks on the fire. But somehow or another, when he was gathering the sticks, you know, sometime when you're out in your garden, and you're gathering some some vegetables. You're gathering the fruit of your labor. You know, you don't see it down there, but there's a snake that may be caught up in the midst of what you're gathering. There was a snake that was caught up in those sticks that Paul had gathered. And they, let me tell you something. When they put when he put the sticks in the fire, church of a living God, Pastor Greg, if you want to find the vipers, put a little fire under them. If you want to find the vipers in your life, make them hot right now. Deacon made them put the sticks in that fire. And the viper, it was a little too hot for him. He came out of that fire and he lashed on to Paul's head. Those snakes, they'll do that to you. Right now, they'll fight you right now. Oh. Slim and Supreme Angels say, you knew I was a snake. And don't 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 mess with those snakes. They 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 turn around. They bite you. They bit him on the hand. They fasten his hand. Paul was in a mess. What shall he do? But there was something that this man Paul knew. But God, God had promised. You got to make it to your journey in. And Paul stood there. This is not how my story ends. Some of us been through some trials and some tribulations. Been through some ups and been through some downs. Been through things that have knocked you down and you thought we was out for the count. I want to thank God for Mother Weeds, 98 years old, sitting in the midst of this afternoon. She can tell you that this is not how our story is. Why? Because trusting and depending upon God Almighty right now. She's been through some things, and she knew at that point in time, it looks like it was over. But Lord, I'm in your care. This is not how my story is. Yes, 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 yes. And the barbarians. When they saw the beast. Minister Howard, when people see the situations you're going through. And, and church folks are quick to tell you and look at you. Oh, you must have done something wrong. Because of the things that you're going through. You must have done this. Or you must have done that. Just let them know. Hold on and see what the story is. See, because you're not the author of my story. Church of a living God. I want to remind you this afternoon. I just uh, throw this nugget out to you. Maybe some of you remember. Uh, 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 Trustee Wooten, you remember the old Batman and Long Rangers. You know, they always was in the midst of some type of cliffhanger. You had a whole lot. 
You want to know how did they get out of that situation? Well, I want to let you know there's a simple story of Pastor Gray, how they got out of every situation they was in. Sometime down in a pit, sometime uh, locked in a cliff, in a cave. How did they get out of those situations? Well, I'll tell you how they got out of those situations. The writers wrote about it. God will write you out of the situation you're in if you just go home. Because he's the author and finishes of your faith. I can stop right there and sit down. But I got to play on just a little bit more. Just give me a few more minutes. Just give me a few more minutes. See, because that's, that's, that's how the author of the writers of those stories, that's how they wrote them out. You always wonder, how did they turn their back? Well, that's how the book was written in the script. That's in the script. And the script I read is saying, for God has promised that he will never leave you nor forsake you. It's not his will that it shall be lost. Well, look at this here. Paul, Paul, Paul knew that he had to go to, he had to go to Rome. And, and, and Paul, when the barbarians saw the famous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, Oh, uh, look at that man. No doubt this was a murderer. He escaped the sea, but judgment got him. He escaped the sea, but the famous snake got him down. Vengeance suffered it not to be. You escaped out of this, and you escaped out of that. And somebody say, now nah, they got you now. But they just didn't know that what you got to do is just shake it off. Shake it off. See, our problem is, we got so much stuff in our lives, we don't want to shake it off. We want to live in the situation we're in. Instead of giving it up, instead of shaking it off, we want to hold up. Look at the snake on my hand. But God said, shake it off. Oh. But Paul shook it off. <laughs> Those people they looked around. They looked and they, they were waiting for his hand to swell. They was waiting for him to fall out. Because of the venomous snake. They kept looking. And I want to tell you right now, somebody is still looking. Pastor Gray, we have talked them numerous times. I know many things about your life. I know where the Lord has brought you from. I know about the failed marriage. I know about this situation. I know about that situation. And there have been those who have been looking at you. And they have been waiting on you to fall down. But look what God has done. He brought you a new love. He brought somebody who stands by your side. Show you a living God. And we need to know this morning that they are still looking. They are waiting for it to fall apart. But I want to let you know this afternoon. Keep shaking it off. Keep holding off the cards that change your hands. Because they may be waiting for you to fall down. But when you keep holding on, when you stand when the bloods come, when you stand after the winds stop blowing, when you stand after they stop talking about you, they may even look at you like they did Paul. When Paul was still standing, they changed their perception. They said he was a murderer. But look at there in the last of verse 6. They say that he must be a God. Well, let them know. No, I'm not a God. But I know the God. I know a man from Galilee who found the raging sea. I know a man who walked out on the water. I know a man who went to the cross, who died for my sin and your sin. I know a man who they placed a crown of thorns on his head. Fear them in his fire, nail them to a cross. They fear them in the fire. We look down and say, God, they're going to be a sinner. And they know not what they do. He gave up the goat. They laid them in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night, Friday night. Satan sent his adversary and said, Do you have them? Go to the grave for you. I say, I told you, you're deaf to give. I will hold him. The grave looked around and said, I've got Abraham. I've got Isaac. I've got Jacob. So he stayed there all day Saturday. The grave kept saying, said, you still got him. The grave said, you're deaf to get him. I told you I'll hold him. 
He stayed up all night, Saturday night. Church of the living God, Satan stayed. Do you have him? Yeah, he stayed. I told you, if the grave I got him, the grave should hold him. The grave said, I still got David. I still got Job. I still got all the other brothers. They stayed there all night, Saturday night. He slept in the morning. They stay Oh, 
was no way in my spirit. Because that was pleasing to the house of God. And if you didn't get nothing out of that, you came with a blocky heart and a blocky mind. You came in saying, I ain't going to receive nothing. I ain't going to do nothing. I ain't going to do anything to nothing. But the man of God will not lose his reward on this afternoon. Amen. 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 At this time, we do have a good presentation. Amen. Y'all know I got a lot of time on the wall presiding and pre presenting at the same time. <laughs> but Pastor Matthew Lewis, once again, that word was right now. It was right now. God heals some people in this ministry on this morning. And then you're going to turn around and tell us about our story. It's not the end of it. God got greater works for us to do. And even though we hear it over and over, sometimes confirmation is what saves us. We will get on that ship and those broken pieces you were talking about. Some of them will see a board that's capable of holding their weight so they can get to the shore. But they determined to let it float back. And end up drowning in the spirit, man. And we thank God for you on this afternoon. We salute you. And we bid you, God, speed know that you will be richly blessed. Because we feel that God had a moment to the day in this house. We thank you. We thank you. At this time, we're asking for the great if you have anything to say. Amen. Y'all come on, let's give it up for our leader, Pastor Clarence Gray. Amen. 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 Great help to the praise God. He's very wise. Very wise man. Praise God. He keeps himself available. I can talk to him about anything. And he's just a great, awesome blessing to the body of Christ. I thank God for him. Praise God. And the anointing that he has. Amen. Get our walk burning up today. Amen. God knows he's praying for us today. He's working for us today. Amen. I love it. We're blessed by him more today. Amen. We thank God for you, Pastor Lewis, for letting God use you. Yes. Amen. We thank God for your wife. Amen. 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 So we thank God for him. Amen. 
may let God use him even more. I do want to say that before, before I forget, um, because we didn't get to announce it again, I was notified by my daughter that the funeral for my grandson, uh, Jari, and then it'll be Wednesday at 2 o'clock. And then, and so after this service, if I could find out from different ones who's going to be there, because we may need some help um, with the funeral. And um, if you could let me know if you will be able to make it, I would greatly appreciate your help and participation. I know it's work, so some of you got to work. I understand. I'm going to ask you to take time off of work. Amen. If you are free and you can, amen, we could definitely use the help. Amen. With my uh, grandson's funeral, it will be here. And I will be speaking. Amen. So I'll be speaking the funeral. Amen. And I'll, uh, the eulogy shall say. Amen. But do keep the family in prayer. Amen. God, amen. He's, he's upholding us. He's upholding us. Amen. And prayer is getting us through. Amen. You know why? Because that's not how my story ends. All right. All right. So thank God. Pastor Lewis, again, we appreciate you, sir. Amen. And the two churches that came, we appreciate y'all. Amen. Pardon that with you. Nice and go. Nice and go. Amen. Love you. Love you. Love you. Amen. Thank God for the cameraman. Amen. The musician, you did a great job, man. Yes, sir. Great yes, sir. job. Amen. 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 We, uh, we acknowledge you. Thank God for your presence. Amen. Amen. At this time, we turn it back in the hands of our sister, Pastor. Amen. 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 Again, God bless you. Thank you again for the invitation. Thank you, Anderson Child, for St. Stephen's for coming. Um, I do want to acknowledge again Mother Wiggs, 98 years of age. She surprised me when I found out that she was coming this afternoon. Traveling from Goldsboro, you know, for the past two years, almost three years, we haven't done a lot of uh, fellowship and with various areas and it was just to be able to come this afternoon and to see Mother Wiggs a wonderful Amen. encouragement for me and just to be able to come and just share that this is not our story here. Amen. Even in the midst of COVID, there's so much there's so much that could be said. But God allowed me just to put what I needed to say for the day. Because even in my notes there was a whole section in my notes that was just left out. Because it wasn't me. Just to keep you there. And Lady Grace said it's just right. It was just right. Two, th two things, or three things, maybe, and let me just, just get ready to go. One, um, I just want to just want to acknowledge Minister Howard here, both ministers, Reverend uh, uh, Bax and Minister Howard, but many of you may know Minister Howard here at Greenville. She's uh, uh, her foundation, well, actually SWAT, uh, Survivors with a Testimony, and uh, uh, we're doing great work for domestic violence, and just remind, just remind us, that this is not how their story is. Amen. And also, you see, the choir shows to wear purple today for uh, council, council awareness, domestic violence, and council awareness, because it is uh, council awareness. But this is not how your story ends. They told me last year I went through I went through prostate surgery, but that's not how my story ends. And I'm standing here today. God has blessed me. My story was still going on. So just to feed my whole life. Just to feed my whole life. <clears throat> and finally, and finally, uh, uh, Pastor Gravy will have information later, but uh, December the 17th, please join us uh, uh, via Zoom or a free conference call. We're having a panel discussion on uh, the 21st century Christmas. What about Jesus? So we, uh, we're going to have a few men uh, ministers on the panel. They will they will give a, uh, they will give their their take on it, and then they will discuss it, and then we'll open it up for for questions. So, uh, you know, we see that Christ Christmas has changed in so many different ways. It seems as if we have forgotten about Christ and Christmas, and it's become so caught up that it's just become it's just become a money spender. And we have got to the point where even in this great recession, and somebody said, well, we're not in a great recession. Hey, let me tell you something. If you go through a recession, it's a great recession. Amen. Amen. It may not be a great depression, but it's a great recession. When you can't buy what you used to buy, it's, it's, it affects you. But as we go through this, 
You're trying to figure out how to buy this, how to buy that for Christmas. But I promise you, we can get the real meaning back in Christmas. All right. All right. Because, and finally, Jesus on the cross. That's not how the story ended. But he got up. And he sits on the right hand side of God the Father. Pleaded my case. I, know, I have to tell you, he's pleading my case. Because he looked beyond all of my faults. I saw my knees. Because I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and a rich undone. The first Sundays at Anderson Chapel in St. Stephen's, when I went there, I introduced myself. I am Malcolm Lewis, sinner, saved by the grace of God. And this afternoon, as I leave you this afternoon, I am Malcolm Lewis, a sinner saved by the grace of God. Let us rise. Amen. All right. All right. Thank you, God. As we prepare to close, look at your neighbor and say, this is not, this is not how, my story is. how my story is. Father God, we come to say thank you again. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for continuing to strengthen us along this way. Father, as we go through day by day, dear Lord, we just lift up your holy name, dear Lord, and we let the world know that we want to shake it off because what your world says about us is not how the story is going to end. But we are working and we are looking for that day when you shall say, well done, that good and faithful say. Now as we look to the Lord to be dismissed, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest through and abide with us all henceforth and evermore. Come on, Brother Stainfield. Thank you for not giving up on me. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters.